for the conclusion there. But uh, uh, let me thank uh, Kumar. Look at this video very carefully. This video, one of my pediatric ophthalmology consultants, she wanted to do a congenital cataract around three years old, and first time she's doing a cataract, she wanted me to be the. But I said this happened about four years back. She did a beautiful anterior capsulorexis, and she did a beautiful posterior capsulorexis, and did an anterior vitrectomy as well. Okay, and this is the lull before the storm. Okay, watch this video very carefully. A very nicely designed anterior capsulorexis and a fairly okay posterior capsulorexis anterior vitrectomy done. Then she goes in and injects an hydrophilic acrylic lens in the bag. Everything going on very well. See what has happened to the lens now. So much salt. And it goes through the capsular excess into the vitreous. At that time, I was watching through the side tube and asking her, please hold, hold. She immediately held her, instead of holding the lens, she held my hand. That was the problem. By the time she held my hand, the lens went, lens went into the vitreous cavity. So, the, because this is the first time she was doing it, and I had to do a pass plan, a three port pass plan, a vitrectomy, go in and remove the lens. Fortunately for me, it is a hydrophilic lens. I had put the lens in the sulcus, and the patient, the child was doing well, sing. But ideally, what you should do, look at this IOL. Look at this IOL. What has happened when I injected the lens? In the last minute, it came with a jerk and produced a rupture in the PC. Now, the ideal way to retrieve this lens, to prevent the lens from going into the vitreous cavity, is to do what is called anterior assisted levitation. All the haptic of the lens, with the Kuglan or the Lester hook, what I am trying to do is, I am trying to bring that haptic up. Then I am going, creating a right side port, you can see there, and bringing the entire lens at the junction, holding it at the junction of the haptic and the optic, and bringing that entire lens up. In this way, you can bring that one loop out. Once you bring that one loop out, then you can go ahead and relocate that remaining loop in the sulcus because this is a huge PC tear and you have to obviously put this. This is the aposomic supraphobe lens. The haptics are not as thick as the Alcon SA60. So you can afford to leave these lenses in the sulcus. This is again a patient, relatively younger patient with a... Uh, uh, with a tra the patient had a traumatic cataract and the patient is doing well. This is called the anterior assisted levitation. When you have a lens drop or a nucleus drop, I will show you, if you have time, I will show you one more clipping. This is called the anterior assisted levitation. This is a hyper mature cataract, no very old patient. The patient had cardiomyopathy as well. So I couldn't get a physician fitness. But what is more important, as soon as I chop, the lens started sinking. But I could see the lens nucleus, you can see how huge the nucleus is. So, lens nucleus in the anterior vitreous, in the pupillary area. This is called anterior assisted levitation, wherein you put in a rod and bring it up into the anterior vitreous, make sure uh, into the anterior chamber and then you deliver it. In this case, I did an anterior vitrectomy and put an anterior chamber IOL and the patient is doing well. Okay. This is a, one of my postgraduates. You can see a hypermature cataract and also a pseudo exfoliation. She tried to do an extra capsule. You can see here she has done a fairly good capsulotomy and she tried to deliver this particular nucleus out of that eye. But what has happened is she is not giving the pressure and counter pressure properly. Okay? And in the process, she managed to push the nucleus into the vitreous cavity. Not the nucleus, the entire cataract, including the capsule, the entire cataract went into the vitreous cavity. And she called me from the theater, I had to go in. When I went in, I saw the picture like this, and then I did a upper temporal sclerotomy, being a right eye, upper temporal sclerotomy, and then go in, introduce a rod, and brought this up. This is called the posterior assisted levitation. PAL. So first I showed all and second I showed PAL. Posterior assisted levitation. Only thing is you should know the limitations of this technique. Make sure that you don't do this in very young patients or very high myopes because you are damaging or disturbing the vitreous base. So the entire cataract is brought out and then brought out 
just like the way you do an SICS and then this patient, I took, him, I took this patient up for glue diaval after three months, after doing a thorough anti-vitrectomy now. So this is another patient, you can see here, how as soon as I started this thing, there is a nucleus went in, that is hydro rupture. This patient can see a dense brown cataract, a VIP patient, the former minister, union minister, and my assistant put the viscoelastic on the cornea and pushed the nucleus inside. Am I right? So first I showed all, second I showed Paul, and this is fall. Okay. But don't try to do this, what is called the Al and Paul for this, this particular method. Don't try to chase this nucleus. You will end up in a giant retinal tear. The Al and Paul is for nucleus which is there in the anterior vitreous which you are able to see. Not the nucleus which is sunk completely here into the vitreous cavity. This patient requires a three-port parsplena vitrectomy and the nucleus removal just like the way I am showing here now. Thank you very much, Kumar.